Hey guys, I'm Tati, and welcome to the You Channel Her Story Special. Throughout the month of March, we will be celebrating women of color and their achievements. We hope that the ladies inspire you to pursue your goals and your dreams. Today, we'll be talking about Depa Mehta. Depa Mehta is an Indo-Canadian independent filmmaker. She has a degree in philosophy from the University of New Delhi. In 1973, Depa moved to Canada, where she started her film career, spanning from children's films to documentaries to comedies like Bollywood and Hollywood. Co-founder of Hamilton Meta Productions, Depa is known for creating politically charged films that explore the human condition. Like her internationally acclaimed Elements trilogy, Earth, Fire, and Water, which highlights Indian social political issues and reforms dealing with topics such as arranged marriages, homosexuality, and the mistreatments of widows. She's also known for other thought-provoking works, such as Midnight's Children and Anatomy of Violence. I was born in the city of Bombay, once upon a time. Mysteriously handcuffed to history, my destiny forever chained to my country. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. There are tons of ways you can celebrate Women's History Month like going out there and supporting films and television shows that are directed, written, and produced by women of color. And of course, by watching more Her Story here at the U Channel, don't forget to subscribe and like us on social media. Till next time. Stay tuned for an interview with Christina Raya, an Indian American filmmaker here in New York. Welcome to an extended edition of Her Story. Today we will be speaking to Christina Raya. Christina is a New York City based writer slash director. The founder of the Congested Cast Production and a crowdfunding specialist at Seed and Spark. She also turned her desire to foster collaboration and engagement in the local film community into indie works a monthly film screening series showcasing and supporting work of other independent filmmakers in New York. Okay, welcome Christina and thank you for coming to the youth channel today. Thank you for having me. What inspired you to become a filmmaker? Uh, you know, I've wanted to make movies since I was a kid. I loved watching um, films of all genres when I was very young and I started writing at a very young age and I think um, when I was when I was very very young I loved Tim Burton movies mm -hmm. and I think that uh, I never really growing up kind of multi-ethnic I never saw myself on screen and I never uh, had a story that could really resonate with me but Tim Burton made movies about people that were weird and kind of other and didn't fit in and that really inspired me to try and you know tell my own stories right. and that's really where it started and so I started kind of studying movies and I got a little video camera and I was just making them constantly as a kid and then I decided to study film and now I'm a filmmaker so it's really been a lifelong dream of mine. Wow that's amazing I, I never knew that I, you don't strike me as the type of person to like um, Tim Burton especially because he's very dark so yeah. that's very surprising for me. I, I mean, I actually do a lot of um, kind of, I do some horror films and I do some uh, comedies and I like to blend genres and kind of subvert expectations and play with people's um, general expectations out of specific films and genres because for me, unique stories are everything and telling stories that are um, underrepresented, that's everything. And so it kind of started there and then evolved into discovering much more um, independent type cinema. There has been recent push for diversity in the film industry. We've seen it and with Oscars so white and now the announcement that a person of color has been nominated in the, each of the award categories. What are your thoughts about this? I think that diversity in film. I'm so happy that it's becoming a conversation, but we have a long way to go. Um, I, I, I love Moonlight. Um, I love Hidden Figures. 
Viola Davis and Fences, brilliant as always. Right. Um, but, and, and so, and I love that we're celebrating the fact that the Oscars are not so white, but there's so much diversity in the world and in our country and there isn't just black and white. And so I would love to get to the point where there are stories about ethnic mi minorities being told and um, that it isn't like there's just one in every category. I mean, the supporting actress category in particular is lovely because there isn't just this like idea of tokenism going on. Um, but like there are no women directed, um, nominated for director right now. Right. And no women of color. And like that, we still have such a long way to go. And so I love that we're making progress, but I don't think that, I think that it's really um, a stepping stone and we need to keep pushing forward. And for me personally, you know, I grew up as I said before, not really seeing myself on screen, and so I try to be as inclusive as possible in my work, and I think that that's where we need to go, is showing people as people and telling stories that haven't been told before, and really trying to find that balance between universalism, that like, yes, you know, you can relate to a story of someone who doesn't look like you or, or love like you or live like you, because, you know, we're all the same at heart, right. but also kind of having representation of like what does it mean to be a minority in America right now and like what does it mean to be an immigrant or a child of an immigrant as I am you know these are unique stories that aren't being told and so I just I love that there's a conversation happening but it's really uh just the beginning right I, I definitely agree um how important is it to have women of color represented behind the scenes so important um I think that Representation in front of the camera is one thing, and I applaud people that are choosing to be inclusive and increase representation in that way. But you know, Hidden Figures was written, was directed by a white man, and like, great, but the person who's telling the story, their perspective matters, and like, people should be able to tell their own story. And I think that that's, that's everything right now, and so I. I think that the audiences are demanding uh, more representation in front of the camera, but we, and you know, me as a professional working in the industry and my peers, we need to fight more to allow people and put them in positions to tell their own story because that's really the next step is the perspective, the unique perspective of the person that has lived that life. Right. Hey, that's amazing, that's great. Wow. Um, earlier on her story, we spoke about um, Depa Mehta. How has her career inspired you as a fellow filmmaker? So I, I love her work. Um, I grew up, so my mom is Indian, um, and I grew up watching mostly outside of American TV and movies. I watched Bollywood movies, uh, and that was really the only time I saw anyone on screen that looked like my mom. Uh, not necessarily like me, because being multi-ethnic, it was a, there. There was a nuance there that that is still not quite represented, but. Um, I didn't, you know, Bollywood movies are lovely. They're, they're a little cheesy and a little melodramatic and I think kind of um, dismissed as, as not uh, as artistic or as important. And I didn't know until I was a teenager that there were these people making films about India, in India, by Indians um, that weren't part of Bollywood. And that's when I discovered her work. Um, I first watched Earth when I was 18 and loved it. And, and like that film was banned, which is just like, she's, you know, kick ass. That's amazing. Can I say that? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, so it was just, it was wonderful to kind of at the, really the peak of me deciding to pursue filmmaking in my life to discover her work and be inspired by that that was huge and she is just such a wonderful filmmaker who kind of shows um different sides to the same story in such a nuanced way and I just am very inspired by her and I hope to see more from her uh, especially in the mainstream I would love for her work to reach more um Americans because I don't think that I'm on panels a lot talking about the films that have inspired me and other filmmakers, other directors talk about the films that inspired them and the directors that inspired them and her name never really comes up. And so I hope that more people discover her work. Right. Yes, yeah, it's good. All right. 
um, what are some challenges you have faced as a filmmaker? A lot. Um, you know, for me, I try to turn every disadvantage into an advantage. Uh, so, you know, being a woman, um, there aren't a lot of opportunities. You know, we're over 50% of the population and there are so many women um, directing but we make up 7% of the directors in Hollywood and, and there's so much discrimination. And then to be um, a minority, like that's a whole other thing. There aren't opportunities. There aren't opportunities really. Um, there are gatekeepers that just aren't letting people in the door. And so for me, I've chosen to find an audience. I've used social media and I've used kind of the internet to build an audience for my work and my voice as a filmmaker and reach people that want to see what I want to make and that care about my voice and my passion as a storyteller. And that's how I've made a career for myself. Uh, but there are, there are a lot of challenges, you know. I think that the most frustrating thing is when I'm uh, doing, I'm at a film festival and I'm on a panel and I'm, you know, a panel of five and I'm the only woman and I'm also the only person that isn't white and I'm supposed to somehow represent both women and and then people of color and I don't think that a my experience is my experience and and that um, and then also to be a person of color like I have so much privilege that other people of color and women of color in particular uh, don't have in the industry and so I would hate to be like a representative of this entire group of people this very diverse group of people and so I am hoping to get to the point where I can just be myself on a panel and talk about mm -hmm. my career and my own films and not have to like have this weight on my shoulder because men you know white men in particular get to be they get to be th their individual selves mm -hmm. on a panel and talk about their work and they're not representing you know men in general or or white men in general and so that's a big challenge that I'm definitely trying to push back against and and the way that I do it is like if I get asked to do a panel I say I won't do it unless there's another woman on the panel or, you know, unless there is another person of color on the panel that that will be included because I think inclusion um, is, is extremely important. Right. Um, do you have any advice for young filmmakers of color? Uh, you know, for me, I think it's just you, you embrace your voice as a filmmaker and you just get out there and tell your stories and don't let anyone stop you. Find people who want to be a part of what you want to make and you just just do it, you know. Um, no one is going to knock on your door and offer you an opportunity. No one is going, yes, there are people out there that will empower you in your voice, but you have to find them and you have to force them to pay attention to you. And so just, you know, be a force to be reckoned with. Get out there, you know, cell phones can can shoot beautiful video these days and um, make a silent film if you don't have have the money for sound but just tell your story just do it and I think that that's that's really where it's at for any filmmaker but especially um, filmmakers that feel like they're being marginalized or their voices aren't being heard well I want to thank you for coming today at the youth media center thank you and yeah thank you for watching her story and um, we'll see you next time